cities like London, where we've got seven or eight million people and a very large number of cars on a road, uh, have got very intense air pollution problems. Uh, it's not uh, apparent to everyone because this air pollution is largely invisible. Invisible Dust is uh, a new project that has been set up in 2009. It's artists and scientists working together to um, explore air pollution but also other environmental concerns. What do you do with this invisible pollution? And in this particular example where we're working at King's College, it's been very exciting because what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at something which is invisible. But artists can often do something which is quite humorous or bring in different um, uh, visual aids. But your lungs are kind of like kind of squishy. So you don't really, you don't really see those great. They're not, they don't look great. Now this is the exciting moment where a little cohort of you get taken for your tests. London was introducing the low emission zone, and uh, as a consequence, therefore, over the next uh, four or five years, air quality in London should improve because of this measure. And we were very interested as investigators to look at the association between, hopefully, the improving air quality and uh, general respiratory health and lung growth in uh, children in London. The nature of the study that we wanted to undertake would require about 400 children being recruited and uh, examined every year. This effectively allowed us to go out to 20 schools every year in uh, Tower Hamlets and Hackney and to, uh, to look at one age group, eight to nine year olds of children. Take a breath in and blow. So what we're looking at in the children is their lung or respiratory health. So we're going to be measuring their lung function. Okay, breath in. Now blow. Keep it there. Uh, we're measuring there. exhaled nitric oxide. It's a gas that in the air that they're breathing out and this is a measure of inflammation in the lungs. In the genetics, we're, we're getting that from their saliva. And then we're also taking a urine sample from them. And from that, we can look at chemicals in the urine that tell us how exposed they've been to traffic. What's this called? Brilliant. It's a sort of an opportunity to really teach them some science and to place the science in some sort of wider context. OK, so thank you very much. The artistic exercises really support and build upon the science. And maybe just help those ideas become concrete in the head of the children. Now, the next challenge is going to be if you can draw invisible... Having had a discussion with the scientists about what was going to happen, I came up with the idea of using our breath to make drawings, and also kind of thinking about how to articulate through art, through drawing, some of the ideas around pollution. Particularly with the breath drawings, it enabled the pupils to kind of um, physically experience um, an element of their breath. Also, it gives them something to hang on to, a kind of tool for the pupils to articulate um, what they've learned. Hopefully they go away and they've sort of learnt something about analysing things they can't see, which is, you know, a nice abstract concept for them to, to grasp. It does look like a tree, doesn't it? <laughs> Whenever you bring an added dimension, such as you know the uh, the artistic input that we're having to this project now, it's quite clear that both sides can learn from each each other. And of course, then the product at the end is is much much better. What I enjoyed the most is when we got to use the straws to use to make the pictures, and it was really really amazing. The children love art projects and. It was a good way to introduce a science concept. Some air pollution is invisible and it can also affect your lungs.